What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988, coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. Today I had a video planned, um, talking about Francis and the Francis character, and you know, talking about that for old people who've seen the changes to the character and, and, and the new stuff. I'll probably make that video later in the week, but today I saw a video by Philip DeFranco uh, talking about a family here on YouTube. And actually, to be honest with you, I was clued in on that about, I think, Friday night uh, when that video first started circulating on Reddit. I'm not going to mention the name of the family because I don't want to lump into the situation. I don't want to add any extra bullshit or terror. But I thought this, instead of the usual stuff today, I would make a rambling video talking about what's going on there and talking about what's going on in my life and what has happened to me and draw some of the parallels because I can't speak for the kids in that family. I can't speak for that family. I, I'm not knowledgeable. I'm not there. I don't know. Um, what I can do is draw parallels to my own life and use the examples that I've experienced to, to share with you and maybe influence the way you think about yourself or your life or the world, or maybe even about this family a little bit. And so let's do that today. I'll uh, use my rambling video for that. So if you're unfamiliar with the situation, go watch the DeFranco video if you'd like to. It uh, It's unmonetized. So you don't worry. You're not helping anybody profit off of this stuff, which I, I, I'm absolutely against. Um, but, you know, over the weekend, we had that shooting, the guy who broadcast himself live on Facebook. And it got me thinking about whether or not it's moral to give people the option to broadcast themselves, knowing that some people will do terrible stuff. Like the people on Facebook, should we give the ability to live stream on Facebook, knowing that some people are going to beat other people or shoot other people or murder other people? Is that moralistically the right decision? Here's what I can say. I don't know if that's the right answer. Um, I think it's worth the trade-off. I think, you know, as an advocate against cyberbullying, I have often frequently said that I hate cyberbullying, but my ability to communicate with you and your ability to communicate with me is worth the price of me having to deal with cyber bullies and people who say mean things or do mean things to me using the internet. It is worth it because I can put a very positive message in your mind and you can put a very positive message into mine and we can share those positive messages throughout the world and there's more positive than bad. So yes, it's worth the price. And in the same situation, I think the ability to allow idiots to broadcast themselves is worth it because more good is done. More people use that broadcasting ability to do good things, to say good things, to feel good things, and to share good things than bad things. And one of the best parts about it is sometimes these people who do harmful, terrible things, the fact that they chose to broadcast it actually gets them caught quicker. Sometimes there's no video evidence that you have done anything wrong, you know, 50 years ago. But now there's video evidence. You chose to broadcast it. Of course you're going to jail. Of course you're going to get caught. And that's a bonus. That's a great trade-off, right? And it reminds me to when I was a kid, how I was always desperate to own video cameras and, and audio equipment. And I always had a fascination with it. But one of the reasons I wanted that was to prove what was going on in our home because no one would ever believe me that I was being mentally or physically abused. And I always wanted to find some way to capture that. And I got a few cameras growing up, you know. I got uh, a Polaroid camera when I was like 10 or 11. I got some audio cassette recorders, a, a boom box that could record audio. Uh, I eventually I went to Upward Bound and I got to try a video camera for the first time uh, and loved it. VHS recorder, you know, it was incredible. And that actually was, uh, is what eventually led to this. So something good came out of that desire. But one of the reasons is because I wanted to record what was going on in my life, for my own sake, for my own sanity, maybe to show it to my mother or the people that were abusing me one day, or to show it to somebody outside of the family for help. Well, now, <laughs> in some situations, you see people recording themselves doing stupid stuff. And that may or may not be happening with, with what's happening with this family. But basically, there's this family on YouTube that is filming themselves doing pranks on their family. And they're coming under fire because some of the language that they use and some of the tones that they use during these pranks are very reminiscent of violence. In fact, if you added some fist punches to some of the audio tracks that these families have, have, have recorded during pranks, it would be identical to what I grew up with. Identical. You know, and it, it's very reminiscent. It sounds very much like mental abuse. What I've learned as, as an adult as, after years and years of therapy was absolutely mental abuse. So, <laughs> it... I think that the kids in this situation probably are not living an ideal life. And, you know, sometimes we confuse the ideal with normal, right? 
we always think, you know, an ideal situation for a kid, a normal situation is a kid never gets yelled at, a kid never gets hit. That's not normal. That's the ideal situation. That's the ideal that we would want for a child. But human relationships are complicated. Adults are complicated. Children are especially complicated. When you put an adult in the same room as a child or you're, you're trying to take care of the child, things happen. Sometimes parents lose their temper. Sometimes par parents get upset. Sometimes parents raise their voice and use swear words. Unfortunately, sometimes parents also hit their kids, and that's why we have Child Protective Services, um, to investigate this kind of stuff and try to figure out if it's okay and if it's all right and if it's acceptable, whether or not it falls within the realms of normality. Um, but when I watch these videos, I see the youngest kid ex exhibiting signs of anxiety and, and, and anxiety disorder that's being created. He's saying things that are very typical of, of someone who is developing an anxiety disorder. And that really scares me because I worry about that. I, that poor little kid add a few pounds to him and I swear he would sound exactly like I did growing up. And you look at some of the other things that these kids are saying in these compilation videos, um, at least we're not being hit. At least we're not getting beat like every other parent. A nine-year-old or 10-year-old or 11-year-old doesn't come up with that phrase himself. He gets told that by a parent and then parrots it, you know? Like a child doesn't think, well, everybody else is getting beat. How does a child know? How does a child know what's normal is? Because let me tell you something. When I was growing up and I was being beaten every day, I thought it was normal. One of the reasons I thought it was normal is because I would ask my abusers about it, who were my parental units, who I believed and trusted. Perfect example. Um, we would watch television and people on television would eat very differently than we were. We were eating snack cakes and sodas and, and garbage all day. Just human garbage, just garbage just actual garbage. And we would watch people on television eat salads and, and vegetables. And I would say, mom, why don't we eat like people on television did? My mother, who's my caretaker, would say, nobody actually eats like that. Everybody eats like us. We eat the way everybody else does. On television, they're just putting on airs. That's for television. And I grew up believing that, believing I don't know why I'm not losing weight when I'm eating like everybody else does. I see the other kids at school eat, drinking a soda. I didn't know that they weren't drinking 12 a day <laughs> like my family did it's normal. And, you know, obviously even when it came to the physical abuse and the mental abuse that I was exhibiting or that I was experiencing, I thought that was normal. And it wasn't until years later that I thought to myself, well, it's not normal to get hit in the face or burnt with cigarettes or stabbed or cut or have fingernails scratched across you. That isn't normal. That's not what happened to other kids. And, you know, I wasn't until even later that I realized that not every kid got told, you're the worst thing that ever happened to me. You're the reason I'm a failure. You're the piece of garbage. I fucking blame you. I blame you. That, that's not normal. And even at the age of 25, when my mom sat down and told me, I fed you wrong on purpose because, um, I fed you wrong on purpose because I wanted to make sure that you were so fat you could never leave me. <laughs> I thought the way that I ate was normal right up until that day. And there's still things, uh, God, I'm laughing about this and I know it's not funny, but I don't know how else to deal with it. You guys wonder why I make such offensive jokes because this is how I deal with pain. I find humor in it. I try to find the funny in it, even when there isn't any. Um, but I, uh, I, even just a few weeks ago, I was telling my wife how abnormal things that I experienced were. And I, even to this day, I just now realized how weird it was how weird some of the things that I experienced and how weird some of the things I felt or that was done to me, how awful it was. And I think the kids in this situation are going to feel that way. I think it is abnormal to have your parents play pranks on you several times a month. I think it is abnormal to have your parents scream at you the way that these parents are screaming at their kids. I think it is abnormal to have a camera in your face all of the time. I think their situation is abnormal. Now, whether or not Child Protective Services finds this to be so abnormal that those kids need to be protected, that's up to them. But I certainly don't think it's wrong for Child Protective Services to look into that. And I think Philip DeFranco is a fucking hero for having the balls to make that video and for intervening and drawing attention to it and leaving it open-ended. He didn't make any accusations. He just left it open-ended. I think that's amazing. Because I will tell you, I will tell you... It, I would have done anything. I would have done anything for someone to have inter intervened on my behalf. And no one ever did. And they knew. The people I grew up with, they knew. They've told me. Some of the people I've, I've spoken with over the years have told me that they knew.
Yeah, he did nothing. So, you know, I don't know. Here's what I here here's he, this is a rambling video, so it doesn't have a point. This is just me talking and trying to get some of these thoughts out of my head so that I can go on through my day and sharing news with you and sharing things that are interesting to me and important to me. And I think what's important to me here is to reach out to those of you, maybe even to those kids one day, and say that the shit that's happening there is abnormal. And a lot of the shit that's happened to in this world is abnormal. A lot of the things that we experience are just traumatic. And it sucks. But one day you will be in a situation where you will look back at those things and realize how weird they were, how abnormal they were, and you'll outgrow that abuse. You'll outgrow the damage that it did. You'll be a better person. You'll feel better. And that has happened to me many, many times. Even though my abuse was very severe, I continue to outgrow it more and more every single day, gain more clarity, gain more control, gain more peace every single day. And I know a lot of people, when I talk about this stuff, they think, Jesus, that's so awful. That's so bad. And I know when you think about your own shit, you think the same thing. This is so awful. This is so bad. But the good news is, I think my story, and just like yours, I think it does have a happy ending. I really do. I think the majority of stories do, because that's how the world's supposed to work. That's how it's supposed to be. My ending is going to be happy. It is right now. I'm happy. I'm happy. And I never thought I could be. And I know that you will be one day, too. So... uh, boy oh boy i don't know if i'm gonna upload this i should have just made the francis video uh but here's here's what i would like you to do do me a favor let's let's this video is therapy for me so let's have the comment section be therapy for everybody why don't you share what you went through in your life even if it was normal even if it was ideal tell me what you went through in your life because you know i never get upset when i hear that somebody had an ideal life i'm happy for them i want them to have that it's what i want for everybody i'd like to be the last person in the world that had a shitty childhood i won't be but it would be neat. So if you had a great life, if you've had a happy life, if you've had a miserable, and if you have some trauma that you want to talk about and share with us, know when I post one of these rambling videos, I read it all. I read it all. So do me a favor. Get out there. Get into the comments section. Post a little bit. Share that with me. And, uh, and don't worry. I, I do truly believe your happy ending is coming. If I deserve a happy ending, if I'm getting one, you sure should do. Guys, I, I appreciate you watching. I love you very much. And I'll speak with you again soon.